My name's Tim Potts. I run an oak framing company just south of Gloucester. We buy in uh, timber by the lorry load. A mixture of curved timbers, which we use for bracing and uh, character items in the frame, and straight timber. Um, straight timber comes to us in various different ways. It comes as uh, stock items. So, for instance, we'll buy in various different stock dimensions at plenty of different lengths, and then we season them up. <clears throat> Those bits of timber we buy typically as a premium grade off heart. So we're not looking at buying box hearty timber that's going to split through to the heart. The other straight timbers that we buy would be bought from a cutting list, which is generated uh, according to our exact needs on a particular build. And those timbers will be bought green to use pretty much straight away and frame into a new frame. The third sort of timber that we buy is curved timber. Uh, Curved timber comes as uh, you know big slabs from curved trees, which are slabbed up, and those we typically buy uh, in Britain, uh, often down in Wiltshire or as close to us as we can, so we can get down to the yard and actually climb around the piles of timber and choose the piece that we want and say you know, slab it this way, this is what we need it for. Uh, those again are seasoned up in our yard before they're used, and smaller braces. Um, you know, up to two metres long or something like that, two and a half, three inches thick uh, from small curved branches, uh, which again we season up, stick up and season up, and we can use those within a couple of years. Certainly not the most expensive way of building, and you can build very economically using oak frame. It's really a question of uh, clever design. You can, you, can, you can build a very ornate and complicated and detailed oak frame that's going to cost enormously more than any other method of uh, of building or you can build something very simple which is really very competitively priced. We've done some fairly massive projects. We did one over in Norwich which was uh, for a commercial uh, shopping centre. On that project we were looking for um, timbers that were steady timbers, that is they weren't fresh sawn, that were up to uh, 11 to 12 metres long, 12 inch by 12 inch uh, and we needed uh, over 20 of those. Uh, that was a major procurement issue, uh, which is always quite fun, a bit of a challenge. And it involved going over to France and searching through sawmills yards uh, and, and looking to see what we could get and uh, measuring the moisture content as we went, making copious notes and eventually we managed to find all the pieces we needed. We buy uh, most of our straight timber in from France uh, where there's um, a continued tradition of uh, single species forestry. Uh, and you can go to these forests and they are truly enormous and uh, what happens is that the uh, seedlings grow with each other uh, all at the same age, force each other up and you end up with these very very tall straight trees. Uh, the tradition of forestry is unbroken there and they know about uh, rubbing off the lower branches and so you get clean um, oak trunks that you really wouldn't recognise as oak trees in this country. In mixed deciduous woodland here you get you get branches at a low level you get um, you know lots of uh, very broad shaped oak trees that produce wood that's lovely to use for curves and produces a lot of curves um, but doesn't often produce the quality of straight timber that you need for beams and purlins and those members that are in bending stress uh, so what you're trying to avoid basically is big knots it's uh, paradoxical that when we get asked to use English timber in restoration jobs, that probably the, uh, the most similar sort of timber that we could find for those buildings that were built hundreds of years ago is now being grown in France. Uh, and uh, I do sometimes try and make this argument, but uh, often uh, the client will want it to be English timber, in which case, of course, uh, at a premium, you can find that sort of timber in England. But it's, it's uh, increasingly scarce. If you want to see all of your timbers externally, like a traditional black and white timber frame house, then you're not going to see them on the inside. In those sort of cases, you'd have uh, you know, uh, lime rendered panels. Of course, very, very important that it's not cement, which is you know, the, the kiss of death to oak. Cement is a non-porous material, which makes a hard surface against the oak and, and causes a capillary uh, capillary action between them, actually sucking in and holding moisture against the oak and uh, it causes rot in a very short period. 
we're seeing lots and lots of buildings that were, that were uh, renovated in the 60s and 70s uh, being devastated by, you know, cement flaunching in contact with the oak. The historic advantage of oak is its incredible durability, I suppose. I mean, it's amazingly resistant to fungus, it's amazingly resistant to uh, beetle. Um, all of the sapwood you can expect to go over the you know, fullness of time, it will be lost to beetle. But all of the heartwood is practically, you know, uh, impossible for beetle to eat through, uh, with the exception of the death watch, which more or less, you know, always is brought in through rot and comes into the building with the wood rather than finding the building on the wing. There are disadvantages which should be mentioned really. Uh, it's incredibly prone to uh, tangential shrink shrinkage uh, which makes it split to the heart. Uh, shrinkage in oak happens in two directions. Um, when, you, when you see a cross section through a timber with the heart in it, it's happening uh, in a radial direction towards the centre and it's also happening in tangential direction around the centre. Uh, if it shrinks radially faster than it shrinks tangentially you've got no problem. As soon as it's shrinking radially slowly but it's trying to shrink tangentially faster it cracks to the heart and that, that's a characteristic of oak and so it will always crack to the heart. They can't have the wood on the outside and on the inside and have the insulation. So that's a bit of a disadvantage. But of course, uh, where you really see the timber when you're inside the house, roof trusses, floor beams, all of those character pieces and braces, you know, it's still the best timber of use, really. Most uh, widely used joint is a pegged mortise and tenon. Uh, it has very uh, definite parameters that makes it work. So you need it to be uh, uh, ideally uh, about an inch and a half of tenon thickness. You need the tenon to be about three and a half inches long. You need the uh, cheek of the mortise to be about an inch and a half and you need the peg to be about an inch and a half from the shoulder. And then the peg hole in the, sh in the tenon and the mortise aren't aligned so that when you drive the peg in, it pulls it up tight. There are scarf joints. Scarf joints are to elongate um, multiple pieces of timber so they make a one long one. There are a lot of different scarf joints and the design of the joint is determined by the uh, stresses that are going to be placed on it. There are qualifications in training craftsmen. Um, uh, I've actually written the NVQ level two and three qualifications and we've developed those through the Carpenters Fellowship. We've set up a training forum which delivers apprenticeships and MBQs and other sorts of skills training and health and safety training. So we've made enormous leaps in the last uh, 10 years to produce proper uh, nationally recognised qualifications. Um, so that's, that's an amazing step forward. I think increasingly um, building control are more sympathetic to oak frame. They're more confident in how it works. They need full structural calculations. They need uh, some sort of uh, confidence that is being done by somebody competent. Uh, you have to remember that there aren't actually any, um, th there's nothing in particular that qualifies you to be an oak framer. And so there's plenty of oak framers who are producing oak frames who might not producing, be producing good quality ones. And I think there has in the past led to a certain amount of suspicion between uh, building control and oak framers. It's something we have to work on really. We have managed to incorporate clients' timbers into our frames. It's usually a dream that a client has which isn't maybe as practical as it should be. Where they've got you know, a big resource of standing trees uh, that they can fell, that's possible. Where they've got one or two trees they might have felled uh, and want to look for a use for. Uh, by the time they bring in the frame, it's usually too late. You know, they've had it slabbed and converted uh, and it's not really going to be suitable, but it can happen. It's nice when it does. Uh, over there, um, and it's well worth visiting, 
There are numerous, numerous forests, uh, many millions of hectares. <laughs> you have to scrub that. <laughs> 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 That's the entirety of France. I don't even know how big a hectare is. <laughs>